This is the polar bear habitat. Kids are not on the menu. Thank you, the polar bear keepers. All the people in charge of making sure the polar bears stay happy right over there. Today, we're following the keepers to learn about how they encourage breeding in the largest land carnivore. We've got the kids with us today. Come on, August. And we had to bring the kids to show them this giant bear. You don't realize how big they are until you're standing right next to them and you're like, oh my gosh, you're huge. When he finds a female that is not being protected by another male, he'll do what's called a guarding behavior. And he'll stay with her and pretty much protect her from any other boys coming around to make sure that when she does cycle that he's the one that's with her. Polar bears are this way then. Okay, I'll follow you. So the goal today, really simple. Learn as much as we could about reproduction in polar bears. And this could be really important given what's happening in the Arctic. And the kids didn't need help to get excited about the polar bears. Clearly they already were. So off they went to the Rocky Coast habitat. Look at that. Oh, look at no that. way. Look at I need two Arctic foxes. They're so cute. And this highlights one of the greatest things about the polar bear. It's an ambassador for all the animals in the Arctic. A polar bear. I see a polar bear. Right there. Oh my gosh. Right now we can only see one polar bear. We came so early the polar bears were both sleeping, but that won't last too long given the keepers brought food. I guarantee if we go up top and he smells the food, he's going to wake up and, and look for us. This one is his absolute favorite. This is a herring. It's sort of like the pizza of fish. It's his favorite. Not, it's, it's like a red herring, I think, probably. Like a red herring? <laughs> Is it a red herring or just a bad guess? <laughs> Does it look red? Okay, let's not get distracted. We need to wake this polar bear up. We're gonna go up and feed the polar bears. All this on camera. And when you're talking about breeding polar bears, well, you need to make sure their diet is really good and they're well fed. There he is! Come on in! Yep. Good job, buddy. Oh, that's awesome. Good boy. Here at the zoo, they have two bears, a male and a female. This is the large male. This is Nikita, and he loves red herring. <laughs> but that's not all he gets to eat. And what is it that you're feeding him? Um, this is some um, zoo-based ground beef. It's got vitamins and minerals in it. It's made, made for these guys, for carnivores, zoo-based carnivores the cute ears and the nose and I just humongous paws. Anything about them is amazing to me. What? what? Look how big he is. Look how big he is. It's like 12 feet. He's bigger than you guys. Uh, males are typically uh, like twice the size of the female. Our male right now is a little over 1,200 pounds. The difference was quite evident. Here's the male and then here is the female and she comes in at about 700 pounds. Yeah, if they're gonna have babies, they wanna have uh, a good fat reserve so that they could live off of that while they're denning and waiting for their, cu their cubs to be born. To help with the process of mating, the keepers are trying as much as possible to simulate how things might be in the wild. Polar bears in the wild are solitary and they only come together for breeding. So we do the same thing here. We put them together early-ish winter, about the time they would come together in the wild. A certain time of the year, the male will start sort of tracking females. Um, they have a really good sense of smell. They can actually um, find a female and track her for miles just by this, like this, the smell that she's leaving from the bottom of her feet in, you know, on the ground. Beyond just their behaviors, the keepers have a clever way of looking at the hormones that the bears are emitting. Not only are we in the polar bear habitat, we're actually here to look for polar bear poop. Uh, the reason for that is that it's time to mate these polar bears and they use the poop to detect whether if the uh, female is ready to mate. It's really exciting, actually. You're learning a lot about this stuff here. And then every couple of months, we send it out to our reproductive team and they will look at all the hormones in that feces and decide whether or not things are looking good for a pregnancy. I also learned that pregnant females undergo delayed implantation. And what that means is that a male sperm will fertilize the egg from the female, but shortly after, pause development. It could be several months. When conditions are right, then the embryo will implant on the wall of the uterus and then normal development will continue. From that point, it only takes about three months before a baby polar bear is born. But it's because of this delayed implantation and the fact that you can't really tell outwardly if a polar bear is pregnant, that the keepers need to sample the poop and check the hormones. So now I understand a bit more about what the zoo is doing to help these polar bears breed. 
For perspective, this is only one of 10 breeding pairs in the United States. And while we do understand a lot of the science behind mating and breeding, there's still a lot to learn. And given polar bear habitat is rapidly decreasing, what the zoo is doing is important for the future. Now, if you visit the zoo in the next several months, here's what you'll be looking for. Anytime between February and April, Anana may cycle. That means she'll be receptive to mating. At that time, Nikita will probably start guarding her. That usually means he'll do things like sleeping with his head on top of her and not letting her out of its sight. If they mate at any time, the keepers will know because of the cameras all around the habitat. And as soon as they've mated, their behavior will instantly change and they won't want anything to do with each other. That means the keepers will separate them again. Then if we're lucky, Anana will get pregnant. Then up and have cubs about four months later. And if that happens, it's guaranteed we'll make another video about it. We just wanted to walk you through this breeding behavior so that the next time you peer through the glass at these magnificent bears, you'll be one step closer to understanding why they're behaving the way they do. Thanks everybody for watching this short. More information on what the zoo is doing down in the description below. And stay tuned for more episodes.